what's going on youtube facebook instagram all social media platforms uh, i am chosen the barber and today we have for you a shadow drop fade tutorial um if you've been following me for a little bit of time or if you're new to the channel if you scroll up my page you'll see um, i have a lot of content spread throughout about eight years but i've been super inconsistent so this is just the start of me uh, being way more consistent with uh, posting content, posting haircuts, posting videos. Um, so this is the our first official official tutorial that we're dropping. And uh, the first guideline that you see us starting off uh, with is our OA guideline using our Andis Supra ZR2 um, right above our Triple Op guideline. And I wasn't able to get that on camera for you guys, but in the future tutorial, I'll be able to go more in depth on our initial guideline. The second guideline we're putting in here is our one and a half blade. Again, using our Super ZR2s. And we're just putting that guideline in, again, just following uh, parallel the, the previous guideline that we have established. And for me, um, I like to use my detachable clippers to establish my guidelines and uh, to remove bulk because at the end of the day, that's what they're that's what they're made for. Um, the strong, powerful clippers made to remove bulk. They, uh, you know, leave a cleaner cut behind. So that's the reason why I like to use that clipper to establish my guidelines. So now what we're doing, we have our JRL Fresh Feed clippers. Um, adjustables and we are blending the triple op into the OA here we've just transitioned into our Andis master um, using our original OG double magnetic uh, zero guard and we're blending between the OA and the one and a half initially you'll see me focusing right on that line um right on that line that you see with the clipper closed or with the blade closed again just using the corners of my blade and as you can see my guard is missing a couple of teeth um so which is good for me in a sense because it allows me to focus on using the corners of my blade so i'm never going to uh, take off more hair than what i need to than what i'm supposed to as long as i'm you know angling my clipper correctly so in this in this guideline i'm fading between the clipper closed and halfway open and as you can see me um i strategically kind of pull the skin at certain points just to be able to blend a little better and, and knock down some little dark spots that i see now again uh we're switching into our wall legend cordless clippers with the uh, fade blade and again I'm just detailing doing a bunch of detail work between the triple lock and a 1.5 and a lot of this is with again the corner of my blade as you can see I am not using the entire blade at all just doing a lot more detail work so these tutorials really um, is just kind of showing my technique showing the things that I do why I do it but also for me i like to look at his game tape so i'm just watching uh watching myself cut hair and, and 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 watching for different techniques or you know my hand positioning or anything i feel like i could improve on and I, i've watched this uh this tape i'm gonna say about 15 times uh, 15 20 times now since i've received it yesterday so um you know for me it's just all about getting better and that's the objective i'm not here to to preach or proclaim to be the best barber in the world but i do trust my skill set i do i do trust my techniques and uh like i said this is just for me to get better um as well as anybody else who 
decided to tune in. So right now I'm just doing clipper over comb, uh, blending in from the 1.5 to the length of the hair on top. Now typically the 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 1.5 guard or the, or the one the 1.5 blade or the one guard will typically be the biggest guards or the blade that I use, um, just depending on the haircut or the length of the hair on top. But nine times out of ten, the biggest guard or the biggest blade I'll use is the one and a half. Right here, I believe I have either my one blade or my one A blade. And again, just doing more detail work in between those sections. Right now, I'm just picking the hair out. I'm getting ready to do some freehand shaping to that hot top. More clip over comb work first, though. More detail work again using a bigger comb. So blending again uh, more into the bulk of his hair right along the parietal ridge and here we get into the freehand shaping and I'm noticing the angle of my clipper I don't really like it too much so um, this is just again another thing for me to, to look at and get better in and to make sure that the next time I cut his hair or any class hair that I'm, I'm holding my, my clipper at the, at the, at the uh, appropriate angle Again, we're just freehand shaping, not taking too much uh, length off. We're just evening everything out, getting loose ends, just make it look good here. Um, at this particular stage, I'm not necessarily looking for perfection, um, you know, because we, we use a curl sponge at the end. So this is just, just to trim it, keep everything even, nice and neat. Here again, we're doing more clipper over comb work. Now we're coming in with our shears. Again, just polishing that high top, that freehand work that we did up top with the clippers. Getting loose ends, like I said, I'm not looking for perfection. I'm not looking to, you know, have the perfectly shaped high top at this point, uh, because again, we're going in with the curl sponge. So. We're just trimming it, giving it a nice even trim, getting a good shape on it. And then we're going to come back with the curl sponge. And as you see, he nodded off a little bit. So, you know, got to have quick hands, quick reflexes. Uh, I'm open to any feedback that you guys have, any feedback, any tips. Um, don't get on here talking crazy and... and, and, and talking wild because you'll either get blocked or I'll just probably ignore you because you know sticks and stones but <laughs> it is what it is here I just applied a little bit of spritz to the hairline and we're using the hair dryer to kind of set it in you see me combing the hair in place and now we're at time to attack the shape up by trimming that mustache again everything I'm doing is, is per my client's uh, consultation prior to the cut. So everything that's happening is per the client's request. Boom, now we're hitting the vertical bars on that shape up. Again, I try to use different reference points on the client's face or on the client's head to uh, try to keep everything balanced and symmetrical. So I'll use maybe the corner of the eyebrow as a reference point or maybe the top of the ear or the bottom of the earlobe or really, you know, just any, any, any point of reference on the client's face or head to use to keep everything symmetrical. We, we here at Humble Legend Grooming Studio, we believe in natural hairlines and keeping everything as natural as possible in regards to no pushbacks. Um, you know what I mean? I have a, a, you know, a client or two that may have a naturally receding hairline or their, hair, their hairline is naturally uneven. And, you know, they request that, you know, I maybe you know, go back a little further on one side or something like that. But for the most part, uh, we trying to keep everything as, as natural as possible, as even as symmetrical as possible um, to give you the best look. I don't believe in pushing hairlines back just to make a super sharp, super dark hairline, nothing like that. If you want your, your hairline to be super dark, then uh, we can we can do some enhancements. But we 
try to keep these, these, these lineups as natural as possible. Not too much pressure. As you can see, I'm tapping and I'm going. I'm not doing no digging. You want to let your tools do the work. Um, and here I'm just doing a little bit more cleaner work, more detailing, just getting any hangover from off the hairline. So that way the hairline can stay as sharp as possible for as long as possibly can. Now we're just doing more cleanup work. Using our JOL trimmer, our JRL trimmer. This client um, has sensitive skin on the face and the nape of their neck. So what, one is the reason why we do the, the shadow fade. And secondly, this is the reason why I'm not using a shaver or doing a total uh, facial razor shave on this client um, because of, you know, just the, the sensitivity level to his skin. So only I only really use, I'm only using the razor just to outline the outline. <laughs> doing the razor work as always man you want to pull that skin tight in the opposite direction uh in which you're shaving one again it gives you a smoother glide over the client's skin but most importantly you are reducing the chances of nicks and cuts on your client as well so please make sure you're pulling that skin And uh, throughout this tutorial journey on my channel, um, as I get more in depth and, and uh, again, we just start releasing more videos, I'll go into more depth into explaining different techniques and the reason why I do certain stuff and where I got these techniques from and different barbers that I learned from. Um, so, you know, just stay tapped in with me, stay tuned in with me. Again, we're just doing some cleaning work, finishing touches on the client switch to my Andes T outliner my skeleton trimmers on this one just because they cut a little closer and the uh the fresh fade JRL trimmers aren't zero gap so I finish them off with the T outliner just to get them a little closer we dust them off with the air compressor keep our canvas keep our client clean I'm coming in with some uh curling cream product hit them with the blow dryer and the curling sponge That is the cut, man. A, uh, a shadow drop fade for you guys. Tune in with me. Stay tuned in with us. Humble Legend Grooming Studio. Humble Legend Apparel. Like, comment, subscribe, share. I'm out. I appreciate you guys.